President, when the Angolan situation came before the Assembly last year, the need for reliable information led to the appointment of a subcommittee with instructions clearly laid down in Resolution 1603, Roman 50. The subcommittee's report is now before us for consideration. In the opinion of my delegation, this report provides adequate information for an understanding of the salient features of the Angolan crisis. Mr. President, our view is that it is now too late to withhold the promise of independence from the Angolese people until the colonial power has completed a belated program of reform, and that Portugal herself should see that this is in her own interest. Time has run out, Mr. President. With the best will in the world, Portugal can never recapture the spirit of the Angolese people and satisfy them with temporizing reforms. Not while the rest of the continent is moving on to independence. It is stated quite correctly that the Portuguese claim one of the oldest colonial experiences in the modern world. The navigators from the 15th century explored the Atlantic Ocean, discovered the west coast of Africa, doubled the Cape of Good Hope, sailed across the Indian Ocean. Every other African territory is bursting with the enthusiasm of youth to try new ideas, to dare the future, to enter new areas of progress. Not so in Angola. Portugal has been so uninspired as to view offers of outside assistance with suspicion. Well-intended suggestions from friendly nations and international institutions with no other ulterior motive have been rejected. The Portuguese government has been dilatory, cautious, and most discouraging of all, reactionary. The friendly suggestions from all the nations assembled in this August organization have been answered by act of suppression. We have witnessed only the imagination of the police where we looked for the imagination of the economist and the political scientist. While the other colonial powers in Africa have developed to a larger measure the mineral resources with which to foster the economic development of their positions, the Portuguese over the years regarded such developments as a danger to be avoided. It is true that in order to avoid the economic disaster which Portugal was facing, the present regime tried to exploit the resources of their colonies on a somewhat increased scale. But close analysis of the alleged economic 